This is the Aldi Easy Home brand electric convection heater. It has a warning on the front. It says caution high temperature. Keep electrical cords, drapery, and other furnishings at least 3 feet or 0.9 meters from the front of the heater and away from the side and rear. Apparently this heater only has one side. Otherwise it would have said sides. But anyway, this is it. It has a warning symbol there. Don't drape stuff over it, which is probably a great idea for any heater. People have been known to do that, which is a big, big no-no. Um, it's kind of big. It is. But it's got some really cool features. There are plastic legs that come with it. You have to screw them on to the bottom. But it also includes a wall mounting bracket kit. If you take a look, I had to screw it on with the two screws there. There are other holes, but there are no holes drilled in the unit, so you just use those two right there as you see them. And of course the same on the other side, right over here. Uh, you can see all the vents in the bottom here, that's to let cold air in, hence convection. The cold air comes in, is convected through and out the top of the unit. And in here you can see that you want to keep this away from stuff. You don't want lint or dust or anything like that really getting in here. Although if a little bit does, it'll probably just burn up inside the unit and that'll be the end of it. You'll get a little bit of burning smell out of it and that's really about it. You can see through the uh, vents here, there's all sorts of coils which generate the heat. And there's also some other stuff inside and stuff on the side. I'll show you now. Here's the control panel on the side. You can see that you have a low, medium, and high setting via the two switches there. There's the 650 watt option, 850 watt option, and with both on is 1500 watts. Uh, the uh, switches here, as you see, have the red dots on them. Those are actually indicator lights. And there's also a little fan inside that will help uh, with the, uh, help aid the convection of the unit. You can actually see the fan inside. It's a little squirrel cage blower in there. Probably see a little more of it like that. I'll get you a better shot of that uh, once I turn it on. That way you can see it running. This also, of course, has a mechanical thermostat, which you can hear the click. But it has one other interesting feature. Before I showed you it has that wall mount capability, this also has a built-in uh, electric motor driven mechanical 24-hour timer. You can adjust all of these little uh, pedals, if you will, here. Each one is 15 minutes for the entire day there. That way it'll only be active at certain times of the day. And you can keep the switches off, so that way you can't accidentally either leave it on uh, past a certain hour or anything like that. Kind of nice for if you have this mounted on a wall in an area that doesn't really receive good heat or has no heat, but you need to keep it warm um, in a colder climate uh, or even in the desert, like when it gets colder at night, this would be a great thing for that. Uh, the timer does run all of the time. I'm going to just put the camera microphone on it so you can hear it. but you'll see it does not register on the watt meter. Uh, so we'll go ahead and energize all the different things. You can actually do just the fan by itself, so I'll turn the thermostat up, kick on just the fan to find that uses 13 watts. I'll give you a shot of that running. There it is inside, and I'll shut it off here. And it actually takes quite a fair bit of time for it to actually come to a complete halt. And it's just slowing down now. And now we'll go ahead and put on the 650 watt element. I'll do this without the fan and you'll hear that it is pretty much completely silent except for a little tiny hum right when it starts up, which you probably won't be able to hear on camera. Turn that on to find it's using 633 or 4 watts and immediately it starts getting warm.
you can see the temperature is rapidly rising. So that generally outputs somewhere in the neighborhood of probably going to settle around 160 or so. It's pretty well done creeping up, maybe about 165. If I go ahead and shut that off and turn the other element on, I'll have a short delay as it just waits for the other element to come up, which it's pretty well doing now, and we'll watch it climb again. So that extra 200 watts bumps you up to just about 180 degrees. Also interesting to note is that the fan, which is over here, the heating element doesn't start till here. And if you look at this temperature gauge here, that's reading only about 80 degrees where that is 180. Now we'll go ahead and kick on both elements. And now we're at 1500 watts, and you can see that thing is starting to move once again. And I don't want to damage my thermometer, so I'm going to take it out. But you can see it does get pretty hot, and that thermometer itself is also pretty hot. There's quite a bit of heat coming out of here. I'll try the infrared thermometer and see if that reads anything reasonable. Yeah, got about 173, 174, somewhere in there. So like I said in my other video, I know this to be pretty correct. Uh, it depends exactly where you're pointing it, where you're holding it. Let's see what happens if I point it down at the bottom here. I can't point it like directly in there. Now we're kind of reading the heating element. But you can see the air below is about 94 degrees and as I go up, Now we're about even with the vents, and it's reading about 150, and of course if we stick it right down in there, we're over 180 now at this point. That'll probably go above 200 degrees. But, if you go ahead and put the fan on, I forgot to show you here actually, we'll just shut it for a second. The 650 I showed you was about 633 before it crept up a watt or two. The 850 reads about 823, 820, about 820-ish, somewhere in there. And both of them should be 1500 watts. It's reading about 1400 watts. Kick the fan on. We'll watch here, that has crept up to about 90 degrees. But um, I can actually keep my hand here. It's quite warm, but not too bad. Here would be an impossibility, because it's way too hot. But if I put the fan on, watch this. fan comes on and you can see that temperature start rising there. It only went up. Uh, it's not as accurate when we get into these higher wattage ranges so 1.41 is about 1410 watts. This uh, fan motor was about 13 if I remember correctly. And uh, the little fan here, while it really does not blow a lot it's just a small amount just to help with the convection. And it's really not meant to suck the heat out of the unit itself and blow it out as heat, but it just aids in convection going through the unit, which is the whole idea. Again, cold air down by the floor, or in this case on top of the washing machine, comes in at the bottom, goes through the heating elements, which are down here, and convects up and out into the room. And it's just a really nice, even warmth here uh, that puts out quite a bit of heat. I'm really impressed with this thing, and I really love the fact that it has the timer on it, which is really a nice feature. Although the timer is motor-driven, uh, at such low wattage, it only read zero on my meter, so I don't really know uh, if it uses maybe even a full watt, it may use only half a watt or so, which the meter is incapable of measuring. Uh, the thermostat on it will shut everything off. The only thing the thermostat does not shut is, of course, the timer, because that needs to run 24 hours a day. With the fan, it's just barely noticeable that it's on. 
and with the fan off it's darn near silent. Kind of a nice thing. I like it. So again, this was the Aldi Easy Home brand electric convection heater. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.